Test-Driven Development is the art of failing early in order to triumph later, by writing tests even before we have anything at all that we can test. Sounds paradoxical, but that's exactly how it is. In this video, I will demonstrate test-driven development using a Connect4 game. We will therefore program a fully functional Connect4 app by always writing tests first and then the actual code that needs to be tested. As is customary for test-driven development, we start with a test. With the first test, we ensure that we have a possibility to distinguish the two players, player yellow and red. In the test folder, we create a folder models and insert a Dart file called player test. If you ask yourself what makes a Connect4 winner exactly, you quickly come to the conclusion that only the color of the player is relevant and the player itself does not need any special abilities. We determine the game mechanics themselves later via another class called game. So, if it is only a matter of distinguishing the players by their color, we do not need a player class. Instead, we will define an enum that represents the player and at the same time the current state of a cell. In our first test, we check whether the player input has three values, namely none, yellow and red. With none, we represent empty cells, with yellow or red, a cell in which a yellow or red coin is located. Before we can run the test, we have to create the enum. In the models folder in the player.dart file, we define the enum with the name player and the values none, yellow and red. If we now import the enum in the test file and run the test, we get green light. Next, we create tests for the board or game board. Within the test group board, we define a late variable of the class board, which is initialized via the setup function. We assume that we can define the number of rows and columns. A classic Connect4 board consists of 6 rows and 7 columns. We now want to make sure that the board behaves correctly in the different phases of the game. The first test checks whether the board is empty when it is created or whether each cell of the board corresponds to the enum value player none. The second test should check whether the isValidMove method, which does not yet exist, correctly detects whether a valid move is executed. The Connect4 board has seven columns. For each move, one of these columns is to be selected via the indexes 0 to 6, where 0 represents the column on the far left and 6 the column on the far right. Moves 0 and 6 are therefore valid moves, while moves 7 and 1 are invalid. The isValidMove method therefore has the task of deciding on the basic validity of a move. Test number 3 checks whether a coin that is thrown in at the top actually lands at the bottom. Throwing in should happen using the place piece method. Here you should be able to pass the column number and the current player as arguments. We check whether the corresponding coin is located at the very bottom and the cell above it remains empty. Next, we test whether two coins that are thrown into the same column are stacked on top of each other, which is the basic requirement for a vertical connection of 4. With the last test, we check whether inserting into a full column is recognized as an invalid move. We insert 6 times into the same column and then check whether the method isValidMove answers with false if we choose the same column a seventh time. Now we create the board and the associated logic to match our tests. First, we define all the necessary attributes. For the representation of the fields or cells, we need a two-dimensional list, where each cell is set to the enum value player none. This gives us an empty board. Then we define a helper method called getCell, via which we can access the current value of a cell. We define the method isValidMove, which returns true if the column number is within the defined range and the top cell of the column is empty, meaning it is equal to player none. If either of these conditions is not met, the method returns false, indicating that the move is invalid. And last but not least, we define the method placePiece to insert coins, which first ensures via isValidMove that it is a valid move and then places the coin in the nearest free position of the column. We import all missing dependencies into our test file and run the tests. All the tests should be successful. We have a way of representing the two players and different cell states. 
our board behaves exactly as we would expect a Connect 4 board to behave. The last thing we need is a game class to handle the general flow of the game and the turn changes. In the test group game, we define a late variable of the class game, which we initialize again via the setup function. Here we pass the corresponding board on which is played. The first test ensures that player yellow can always perform the first move. We check whether the variable current player corresponds to the enum value player yellow at the beginning of the game. The second test checks whether it is the other player's turn after a move. The next test checks whether four yellow coins that form a connection in a horizontal direction are counted as a win for the yellow player. We simulate a series of moves that lead to the yellow player winning and check whether the variable winner then corresponds to the enum value player yellow. We do the same for a vertical win, a diagonal win from bottom left to top right, and a diagonal win from bottom right to top left. Then we simulate the play moves that would lead to a draw if no player has made a connection of a 4 and the board is filled to the last cell. Here we ensure that there is no winner and the variable is draw is set to true. Next, we implement the game class according to the tests. A final variable for the board with a corresponding required parameter. A variable for the current player, which we set directly via the constructor to the enum value player yellow and thus ensure that player yellow opens the game. A variable winner, which we set to null, since there is of course no winner at the beginning of the game. A boolean variable is draw, which we initialize with false and a variable move count, through which we can store the number of previous moves. This variable will help us to detect a draw. Then we define a method called makeMove, which executes moves as long as they are valid and there is no winner yet. We set the next free cell in the selected column to the player whose turn it is. The move is not executed when the column is full. If the move was executed, we increase move count by 1 and check with the check win method whether the just executed move leads to the victory of one of the two players. If so, we set winner to the player whose turn it is. If there is no win, we check whether the number of played moves corresponds to the number of available cells. In this case, we set the isDraw variable to true. If there was neither a win nor a draw, we set current player to the other player and return true, which means that a valid move has taken place. Then we define the method checkWin, which receives the row and column of the current move. The method returns true if the current move leads to a connection of at least four even colored coins. There are four possible directions for this. Vertical, horizontal, Diagonal from bottom left to top right or diagonal from bottom right to top left. We use the two integer values to specify the direction in which the check is to be performed. Let's take a look at the check direction method. The check direction method checks starting from the cell into which the last coin was inserted in positive and negative direction, in other words forwards and backwards, whether a connection of at least four coins of the same color has been established. Depending on the given row delta and call delta, the check direction method checks whether a connection exists in the respective direction and returns a true in this case. If there is a connection in one of the four directions, Checkwin also returns a true, so we know that a player has won. We have now finished programming the logical part of our app. All tests should now run successfully. We have thus secured ourselves extremely well and can rely on the fact that the logic of our app works as expected. Now we can focus on the visual appearance of our app with a clear conscience by creating widgets that reflect the current state of our app. As the home page of our app, we create a stateful widget called Game Screen. As a body, we take a column widget surrounded by padding and safe area. Within the column, we use a container widget to define a single cell of the board and temporarily color it yellow. Using gridview.builder, we can now place this cell in a grid that matches the dimensions of our board say 6 rows and 7 columns. But which board do we use? We use the board of our game instance. And the game instance must exist as soon as we open the game screen. 
So we define a late variable of the class game within the game screen state and a reset game method, which initializes this variable together with a board and executes a set state, which in turn updates the UI. And within the init state method, we call the reset game method and thus kill two birds with one stone, because the method can be used both to reset and to start the game. As the grid view widget does not have exact dimensions and this causes an error, we pack it into an expanded widget. We set the item count to the number of rows times the number of columns. We surround the container with a gesture detector and define an onTap function, which we use to execute the move if there is no winner and no draw. We obtain the correct column number by calculating the index modulo the number of columns. The correct row is obtained by dividing the index by the number of columns, whereby we are always looking for an integer result. We can then use these two values to move our container, which represents a cell, into its own method. The method gets the row and column and passes these two values onto the getCell method, which in turn returns the enum value of the cell. With player yellow, we color the cell yellow with player red red and otherwise we color it white. Then we extract the grid view into a separate method called buildGameBoard for a better overview. And above that we define a method for displaying the game status. The game status shows the current player and the corresponding coin if the game has not yet come to an end and otherwise the final score, meaning the winner if it came to a victory or the text it's a draw if it came to a draw. In order to always display the coin in the correct color, we extract the code into a separate method called buildPlayerToken, which colors the container in accordance with the past player. Wherever we use the container for the representation of the coin, we can now replace it with the buildPlayerToken method. When calling the method, we check beforehand whether there is a winner. Finally, we need the ability to reset the game and start a new game. To do this, we define a build reset button method under the board method. The method returns a text button with an icon that calls the reset game method when you tap it, and depending on the game status, the button either shows new game or reset game. This completes the UI and we can test the game. We programmed a fully functional Connect4 game, but the best thing about it is that we developed it within the context of test-driven development. We wrote a test for all logical processes. This has two decisive advantages. 1. As we continue to develop the app, we can run the tests after every change to our code to make sure everything is still working. 2. If we accidentally integrate bugs, we are directly alerted by our failing tests. If you like the video, please share it and give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.